When the Lord gives you a word, sometimes he'll tell you, you need to do X, Y, and Z. You'll have the confirmation on it. You know it's God, but your life doesn't seem to uh, line up with what God said. And so my entire world was turned upside down. And uh, I was comfortable where I was in North Carolina, had a good church there that I was pastoring uh, along with a good team of leaders. And when the Lord said to me, you need to uh, pick up what you're doing and move to Minneapolis because uh, there's going to come a day where uh, revival is going to hit Minneapolis and spread throughout the country. You know, I was thinking, God, why that area? You know, what what's so significant about that area? And, and the Lord doesn't always give it to you in uh, at one time. Uh, a lot of times he'll tell you what you need to know at that specific time. And he only told me what I needed to know. And so it took faith uh, coming to the area. And so when I planted uh, my church in uh, Minneapolis uh, seven years ago, um, the Lord told me, I didn't just send you here uh, to plant a church. And he said, your focus is going to be rebuilding cities and regions. And uh, I believe that that's what's happening now with companies of prophets and apostles that are coming together. Our focus is no longer building, uh, just building churches. Well, how can we get the best uh, edifice and sanctuary or the biggest uh, place? It's now we need to take our cities back for the kingdom of God. And so it moves us from a religious mindset, a narrow mindset to more of an expansive kingdom mindset when we understand that it's not just about four walls uh, of a sanctuary. It's really about uh, the education system within that city. It's about uh, the local government there. It's about every single uh, mountain and system uh, submitting to the authority of Jesus Christ. And then we're going in as prophetic and apostolic voices to uh, really rebuild, but to bring light in darkness. And so that's one of the things that God has had me doing here in Minneapolis. And it started out with simple spiritual mapping, going in and doing a strategic intercession, prayer walks, all night prayers. I know that a lot of our modern churches don't really do all night prayers anymore, but we still do them here. So we started out doing all night prayers and, and spiritual mapping in the area to find out what is the demonic stronghold that's here? What are the strongholds? What's the major uh, principality that we see within the region? And then how can we counter that? What is our solution to that? And I think as Patricia said, it's easy to focus on the problem. And everybody can identify, oh, these are the problems in your city. These are the problems in your area. But what is God saying about it? What, what's the solution uh, to this? And so that's what we begin to focus on uh, even before starting the church here. And when the Lord began to give us solutions in prayer, not only did we need to push them through uh, in prayer and through prophetic word and declaration, but we also needed to put legs to the vision of what God said. And that's why we had to go in and we still do. We serve in uh, our community every, every week, every month. We're serving, whether it's in uh, homeless shelters, whether it's uh, giving back to our uh, school system here. Uh, we're making sure that we're not just only speaking words, but we're also showing up with love in the community. And I found that if we're going to get out of the religious box, we can't just preach at people and uh, you know, say, this is the word for you. And we don't show up with love when there is a need when there is a situation that comes up and uh, what happened last year with the George Floyd situation, uh, it was horrible um, to see it, uh, especially at the beginning, but we saw that this was a crisis, but it was also an opportunity. And if we can just remember that every crisis is an opportunity, uh, if we're able to uh, really advance the kingdom at that time. And so I'm, I'm reminded of this and I'll, I'll just give this scripture and then give it back over to you. But Jeremiah 29 and 11, uh, it says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the thoughts I think toward you. We read this verse so often, we quote it, uh, we use it in motivational speaking, we use it in our messages, but do we understand what was really happening in Jeremiah 29? There were prophetic words given by Jeremiah the prophet saying, uh, Israel, you're going to go into captivity. You're going to be ushered into Babylonian captivity. You're going into a foreign land in a place where they serve other gods. They don't worship the God of Israel. And he's saying to them, uh, even though God is allowing you to go into this captivity, 
uh, you're going to have to uh, seek the peace of the city that you're placed into. And even though we know that's Old Testament, I believe that what we've seen in modern times is almost like a symbolic uh, nature of a Babylonian system where we're sewn into uh, different systems or different parts of the world. But Jeremiah says this in verse seven of chapter 29. He said, you're going to be carried away into cities but you must seek the peace of the city that you're in. And he said, if you bless the city, if, if your peace comes upon it, then God's going to favor or bless you. And I think that's so powerful uh, because when I first moved to Minneapolis, I was around so many people that were saying, we hate this city. We can't stand this area. We want to get out of here. We can't wait to move. And I mean, I encountered so many people that were saying, we want to move. We want to move. We just don't like it here. And the Lord began to uh, really give me a strong word at the time saying that if the Lord has brought us to a city, we have to bless the city that we're in. We can't curse it. We can't, uh, you know, say that. And we say it in passing, like, you know, I, I had to adjust to the highways here in, in Minnesota. They're, they're quite different from where <laughs> where I come from. I mean, they, I think the story is they say uh, somebody that was drunk designed our, our highways and, and they're crazy. So I would be driving, fighting through traffic. And of course, uh, just in regular life, the words that you want to say is what is, you know, I'm saying this is great. This area is so great. And the Lord would stop me and say, even in your everyday language and speech, you cannot curse. We're saying little things in it. Yeah, so good. We don't see it as cursing our city. Uh, but when we say, oh my God, I hate this, or I just wish that sometimes we're speaking negatively. And not only are there angels that listen for the words that we speak, they're demonic spirits that are waiting to partner with the negative words that we say. And if we speak, uh, what is negative, then we're actually helping contribute to darkness within our area. And so I had to watch just in my regular life. Nope, I don't like this, but I'm speaking that it's going to change. The system is going to change. The highways are going to change. Stuff is going to get better. And so I think it's important for those that are watching. It's not just uh, you may say I'm not a part of a company of prophets. Maybe God's not sending you into regions or cities to transform them, but you're in your city. And you're called to the area that you're in. And whether you're with a group of prophets or not, you have prophetic ability and you can speak and declare God's word and you can speak positively and bless the city that you're in. And when you do this, I believe you're going to see transformation happen right there in your neighborhood and in your community. So uh, I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Elizabeth. I don't know if I shared what you wanted me to. Or not. Yeah, it was so good. It was so good. Hey, Joshua, before we, uh, we let you go there, um, two things. We do have a question for you that came in online. But first, I would love to share. I just love the story of when they had, when it happened at George Floyd, they set up right in the area. And you guys, um, they had different people that were coming out to like preach and share and just love on people. And I remember if you can share the story of when you got up there and the Muslim guy that was there and you props at healing. So like that was what God was doing. And so you guys just went into that. Absolutely. Um, it really started, like you said, with a need in the area because all of the stores were burned down uh, in that particular area of Minneapolis, people didn't have any food. And so our first thought was, wasn't really, oh, we want to go preach to people. It was actually, uh, people are in need and we can't sit back and watch them suffer and not do anything. So we started going out to neighboring cities and just buying up uh, just uh, truckloads of food. And we didn't have it in budget. It wasn't anything that we planned for. I was actually writing personal uh, checks out saying, God, where's this money coming from? And I think we were spending like at least $5,000 a day in food uh, wow. just to bring it out uh, to, to the people. And so we would set up tables and we just started giving. People lined up and it, it would go on for hours. And it was at that moment uh, where uh, as we were giving, the hearts of the people were open because of the love that they saw. And so people started asking for prayer. Now, this is the amazing thing. Uh, there were times we didn't even have to offer prayer. Can we pray for you? They knew uh, the light of God, they could see that from us. And many people were asking, we want prayer. 
And so it opened up a, an opportunity for evangelism. When we got to the street where George Floyd was killed, um, of course, you know, there were there was a baptismal pool set up on the street and uh, people were just coming out, different churches, different pastors, loving on the people. And that particular day um, that I was out there, I wasn't supposed to be doing any uh, baptisms. That wasn't in the plan. Uh, I was actually just out there to worship and sing and praise and pray and all that good stuff. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, go stand in front of the pool. Nobody was getting baptized. Uh, nobody was even getting saved at the time. And all of a sudden, out of the crowd, uh, somebody just started to shout that they wanted to, to get, give their heart to God. And so it was spontaneous evangelism where we didn't really have to do anything other than just lead them to, to Christ. And when one person came, the next person, the next person, the next person. And so they didn't even have people in place to do any of the baptism. So I was standing there by the pool. So somebody turned to me and said, can you baptize these people? I said, yeah, absolutely. So I jumped in. We started baptizing and it went one after the other after the other. It was literally hours out there uh, seeing people baptized, people getting saved and ministered to. And there were Muslim people that started gathering around and they were just watching because you have people from all walks of life that gather at George Floyd Square. And so they were there to give their, you know, pay tribute, but they saw this erupting. And you're talking about at least, it, it was hundreds of people, at least a thousand. And so the, the Muslim guys just looked because in my area, I look like some of them. And so I said, I'm going to use that to my advantage. And they were looking at me thinking, well, why are you baptizing them? And a few of them came up and started asking questions. Not only were they saying that, they were also uh, saying, uh, you guys don't know it's COVID going on and you guys are doing all this. And so the prophetic anointing was so strong uh, that when they started asking those questions, immediately prophecy just started erupting out of me and others to them. And so there were words of knowledge that came. One of the guys that were there, the Lord showed me that he had uh, an uncle that had a heart condition. And so I just started sharing this word and describing this vision that I saw of this uncle, how he looked, what was going on. Uh, there's an issue with his heart and you're concerned about him. And he just looked so puzzled. And he was saying, how do you know this? How, how, who, who told you this? And there was the door to lead uh, them to Christ to say, this didn't come from any natural means. This is from the Lord Jesus Christ to you. And so it was crazy. I've been in amazing revival areas where God broke out in different cities. I've never seen anything like what I witnessed uh, start last year in, in Minneapolis.